Every visionary has a story to tell. These stories educate and inspire us all. You could hear them cranking up in the morning and hear the click, click, click of the roller coaster. It's really feeling satisfied and feeling gratified with bringing happiness to young children, especially families. Working with people who are having a good time is so much better than any other job. Join us as we learn from these trailblazers. I became involved because the guy who uh, was uh, doing the publicity at the time, which was about, about 1944, uh, and I was a sports writer at the Pittsburgh Press. And his name was John Hollihan, and, and he uh, knew everybody because he was uh, the athletic director at Duquesne University. And uh, so at any rate, he did it, of course, as a, you know, make a few bucks in the summer. And uh, so he asked me, he said, look, he said, I, I'm no good at writing. Can you write this stuff? He said, I'll pedal it. So he said, I'll split the money with you. So that's how I got in. Then I went to the Army. And when I was in the Philippines, I got a letter from Brady McSwiggin, who, of course, was president of Kennywood. And he said, Carl, when are you getting home? He said, uh, John Hollihan can no longer do the uh, publicity. So I got this letter in the Philippines asking me if I what when I was getting out because the war was over by then and uh, so I gave him my best shot and got back that summer and he, they put me to work just part-time doing publicity and then Brady made three overtures to me to come out full-time and uh, three different offers the first one was ridiculous the second one was fair, but I didn't want to t take it to leave sports writing, which I enjoyed very much. And the third one, I just couldn't turn down. And besides, I had married uh, and, and had a couple kids to support, and uh, you couldn't do that on a sports writer's salary. So in 1956, I went there full time. You know, once I got into the business, amusement business, I enjoyed it very much, but uh, I'm being honest when I say money was the incentive. I mean, I went from uh, manager to being on the board, and which I was still still manager, and then, then they made me vice president and manager, <laughs> and, and then I became president, and then I became a chairman and CEO and president. So, I mean, uh, it was just the succession of jobs and plus the fact I, I liked the people. I enjoyed the job. It was tough on the family, but I enjoyed the job. When I became president of the association, uh, there were only family parks in the association. There were two international parks. One was uh, uh, the Thompsons from uh, Blackpool, and and the other one uh, was uh, Patty Conklin. It was it was actually a carnival, but because they had a roller coaster fixed installation at the Canadian National Exhibition, they accepted Patty as a board member and as one of them. So he was uh, the only carnival president they've ever had, but. There were just those two international members. I think I had a great deal to do with making an international association. Uh, Bob had actually changed the name uh, with the consent of the board, of course, to International Association of Amusement Parks. We didn't have the other A on then, attractions. Between the two of us, we were traveling and saying, why, why don't we ask these people if they'll join the association, you know, in Europe? and. South America and so forth, and we did. And so I think that was a, a major accomplishment. 
The other was just breaking that bind from the, the fact that it was a small uh, club and uh, uh, made it uh, interesting to Disney and to, uh, to Bush and finally others. But those were the two starters that, you know, uh, broke the mold. I remember Brady McSwiggin, you, he, Brady always had a suite and we'd gather in his suite at night before going out to dinner for cocktails. And they were saying one night about uh, so-and-so, they were considering this guy for uh, the board of the association. Brady said, oh, that's terrible. He said, they can't do that. He said, he, he's, he's just a manager. He doesn't own anything. And I was highly insulted, and I told Carl, and he said, just keep your mouth shut. So after Brady died and Carl was in charge, uh, Carl had been made a uh, board member. And I think he served one year, and he told him, he said, I want CO to take my place. And so that's how I got on the board. Simply that Carl Henninger insisted on it, told the, uh, you know, the committee that I'd be on the board. That was the first time for an on-family member on the board that I know of. Well then, a few years later, uh, Carl told me, he said, Bob Freed asked me, he said, he's on the nominating committee. And he said, they would like you to be the new vice president. And he said, he asked me if that was all right. And he said, you'll have to ask him. And so, of course, I said yes. And it was quite a thrill. Uh, I, I called Annie at home and I think she went to Saks and got something for the banquet, which was a big deal then, and uh, took the train out to Chicago and, and <laughs> we, we celebrated being the first, uh, you know, the first couple as, as officers. Well, moving it to D.C. I uh, gave it uh, a lot of more credence internationally. John Graff had been hired as the uh, Washington lobbyist for the, for the association. We never had one before. They had an attorney in Chicago, but he wasn't, had no Washington connections. John Graff, of course, had worked for Marriott when they started their parks. And uh, it was an attorney, and so uh, he seemed like a good choice. They made him the lobbyist in D.C., and John continued to live there. Bob Bott was the uh, president. So Bob said, uh, what, what do you think about John Graff? I said, I, said, I think uh, he'd make a great person to run the organization. He, he was the greatest promoter I ever knew. And he, he came up with ideas and he shared them. But, uh, I never knew a better idea man. I mean, that was his, that was his area of expertise. It wasn't, isn't the, wasn't on the mechanical side, it wasn't on the financial side or any of that. It was on, although he did tell me, that he said, now Carl Hanger has always argued against this one price. He said, he said, I've told him I'd like to try it. And he said, Bob, you're crazy. And he said, but he said, what if, what if you charge so much it was ridiculous? He said that somebody was willing to pay it. And so that's what he did. And of course it was a big hit. He, he didn't originate it or anything. But I mean, that's the type of thinking that Bob did, which overcame a lot of arguments. Well, the way it happened at Kennywood uh, was that we had Hurricane Agnes in 1972, and uh, we had always had Dark Week which Annie and the family loved because I didn't have to work that week. It was the week between uh, Labor Day and the previous Sunday. Labor Day weekend, the previous Sunday. So you had five days off. And uh, it, was, it was just great because you could see their family before they had to go back to school. And hadn't seen them all summer. So at any rate, for Hurricane Agnes wiped us out for about four days. I mean, you, clo you didn't open. Uh, Carl said, look, he said, we lost all those days. He said, uh, I think we ought to open during dark week. And I said, oh my gosh, my 
kids and wife were going to kill me, which they practically did. And uh, so at any rate, uh, Carl said, why don't we do that one price that week, just for those, you know, four days, because we didn't open Mondays. And he said, just that Tuesday through Friday, why don't we try one price and have the parade? So that's what we did. Oh, the Thunderbolt. I was in charge when it was built. Andy, Andy uh, Vettel and I, Andy of course designed it. Andy and I took the first ride and he had his guys, like Fred Weber's crew, posted all over at, at the, uh, near the uh, top of every lift. So that if the, if the ride, you know, slowed down and couldn't make it over the hill, that they'd push it. He had several guys at each place. And so they'd push it over. And Andy and I got on the ride. We were the only ones in the front seat. And uh, went, ended up back in the station. And he said, it'll do. 